Hi and welcome. In this short tutorial video, I'll walk you through the process of how to add a custom animated character mesh to one of the default controller prefabs included in the character movement fundamentals package. I'll use the Space Marine character from the Angry Bots example project by Unity for this demonstration. By default, this character only comes with running and strafing animations, but I've taken the time to add a few additional animations for jumping and falling, as well as a landing animation, just so we can have a full set of third person animations to work with. I've also set up a simple animator controller for the character, which comes with a few animation parameters to control the character's movements, three basic animation states, and an additive animation layer. To get started, we'll use the blank third person walker C prefab, since it'll provide a good base for us to build on. First, let's add the prefab to this empty scene I've just set up and save it to a new prefab. Let's rename it to Marine Walker Controller for now. Then we'll remove the default capsule mesh by simply deleting the model game object. And now we can parent the animated character mesh to the model root game object. Also, we'll make sure to reset any local transform values if needed. If we now run the game, you'll see that the mesh already moves with the controller, since it is now part of its hierarchy. Of course, no animations are being played right now, so let's get started on that next. We'll need to assign an animator controller asset here, so the animator knows what animations to play and when to play them. We'll need to continuously update all the animation parameters from an external script. So, we'll create a new c -sharp script right here at the root of the controller's hierarchy and let's call it marine animation control. This script will be responsible for getting all the necessary information from the controller script, process it and then pass it along to the animator component. So let's open the script and start writing some code. Since we'll be using functions and classes from the character movement fundamentals package, we'll quickly add a using cmf directive at the top here. Right at the start of the class, we'll first set up references to all the components we'll be using in the script. This includes the advanced walker controller, the animator component, and a reference to the transform component of the character mesh itself. So we've created the references here, but we still need to assign them, and we'll use the awake function for this. For the controller component, we'll just use the get component function. The animator component is located down in the controller's hierarchy, so we'll simply use the get component in children function to find it. Finally, the character mesh transform will be manually set in the inspector, so we'll set it to public here. We'll start by handling the controller's grounded state. We can simply call the controller's isGrounded function and directly pass the result to the animator component which will then use it to determine whether to play the running or standing animation state or the jumping or falling animation state. Now on to movement speed. Let's first get the controllers current movement velocity by calling its get movement velocity function. We can use the magnitude of this vector to set the current total movement speed in the animator. This parameter will decide if the character is currently moving or standing. Next up, we'll split up the movement velocity into a forward speed and a sideward speed, so the animator can correctly blend all these straving animations together. We'll use the vectormath.getDotProduct function for this. By passing in the current forward direction of the character mesh, we can easily calculate how much of the controller's velocity is pointed toward the forward direction of the character. The same method will also be used to determine the current sideward speed by using the right direction of the character mesh instead. Afterwards, we'll just pass the values to the animator component like this.
The character's vertical speed will be calculated the same way, but we'll use the controller's momentum and the character mesh's up direction instead. Let's pass it to the animator and return to the editor to check out the results so far. While we're here, let's quickly assign the character mesh transform in the inspector and press play. As you can see, all the basic movement animations are already working great. So do the jumping and falling animations. However, you'll notice that when the character is standing still and turning around, no animations are being played yet. Since the Space Marine character didn't come with any turning on the spot animations, I've improvised a bit and set up a simple one dimensional blend tree that will add some subtle movement. There is no pre made function we can call to get the current turn speed of the character mesh, so we'll just quickly calculate it ourselves here. Let's create a variable to store the character mesh's forward direction up here and assign it in the awake function. And while we're at it, let's clean up some of the code to make it a bit more readable. We'll use the forward vector of the character mesh transform to calculate the turning speed. By comparing the angle between last frame's forward direction and the current frame's forward direction, we can simply divide it by the time that passed between both frames, time.deltaTime, and we'll get the current turning speed. We'll use the vectormath.getAngle function here, and we'll provide the character mesh's up direction here as well, so the function can correctly determine the sign of the angle. Just to be sure, let's add a simple if statement here to prevent division by zero if the game is paused and delta time becomes zero, for example. Finally, we'll update the forward direction so we'll be able to use it in the next frame. Then let's pass the result to the animator component and head back to the editor. To give some more weight to the character's movement, we'll connect the land animation next. This animation is activated by a trigger called onLand, which we'll call in this custom function, like this. We'll connect this function to the onLand event of the controller script. We'll add our function to the controller's event like this in the enable function. Also, we'll remove the function from the event again in the disable function. This prevents the function from being called if the animation script is disabled or even destroyed. Make sure to always use the awake function instead of start to get any necessary references you want to access in enable and disable, or else the references might not be set up yet and you'll get a null reference exception. With that out of the way, let's see the result. That's all for the basic animation setup. However, with just a few lines of code, we can improve the quality of our animations considerably by applying some simple smoothing to the data we pass to the animator. Let's take the turn speed as an example here. Let's first create the variable to store our current turn speed. Down in the update function, we'll add a simple line of code to lerp the current turn speed toward the newly calculated turn speed. Let's just use 0.7 for a quick demonstration. Also, we'll make sure to pass the interpolated turn speed to the animator. As you can see, the effect can be quite subtle, but it will make a big visual difference. To better control the amount of smoothing, we'll simply use time.deltaTime multiplied by a fixed value, which we'll just call lerp value for now. By exposing this lerp value to the inspector, we can control the extent of the smoothing. And here is a quick comparison of a lerp value of 20 compared to a lerp value of 12. 
In our script, we'll also want to apply this smoothing to the controller's movement speed and momentum as well. So let's set up some variables to store the current velocities. And let's add the lerp code to the update function. Since we are dealing with vectors here, we'll use the vector3.lerp function for these two cases. And just like before, we'll have to make sure to actually use the interpolated value in all the following calculations. Let's see how it looks in game. As you can see, the character's movement as a whole looks a lot more polished now. Here's a direct comparison between no smoothing at all on the left and smoothing applied on the right side. And that's it for this video. For more information on the character movement fundamentals package, please feel free to check out the links in the description below. Take care until next time.